Do you find painting roses really intimidating? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you three different techniques, but just as simply, to show you how easy it is to actually paint acrylic roses. Coming up. Hi again there guys, Emma here from Paint and Pino, giving you some top tips for all things art and design. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. This is all about trying to get people wanting to be involved with painting. It's particularly great for beginners. So if you are new guys, do hit that subscription button and notification bell just below because we do upload weekly top tips every Wednesday and Saturday. As for this video, we're gonna be looking particularly at roses. What is the easiest technique? What is the way that we're gonna try and make this a little bit more achievable? Because they can be one of those elements that's really intimidating for most people. So in this video, I'm gonna show you three different techniques that I've used recently that I think makes painting roses an awful lot easier. Let's have a look. So the first technique we're gonna look at, guys, is the first technique I actually tried in terms of making roses as simple as possible. And it really just involves some basic shapes. So this simply just starts off with like a cloud shape. You wanna put like a base layer just of acrylic pink. Then you're gonna start working the swirl. The thing that makes roses look like a rose is that swirl detail in the middle. So what you wanna really try and do is load up your brush as, as thickly as you can get with loads of white and loads of red paint so that you've got the two contrasting colors on the same brush. And then you're simply just gonna swirl it together until it comes to a point. Once you've achieved that effect, guys, it's then relatively simple to get the rest of the rows looking pretty effective. You're just going to add in some little half crescent shapes just to really build in those layers of leaves around the outside. The second technique I want to show you guys is what I guess is the more traditional technique for roses. A lot of people call this the one stroke technique because it involves using one stroke of paint. The trick to this technique is that you need to have the right tools. So I tend to actually customize my brushes for this. So you can see how I've just cut the edge off. So I've given like a 30 degree angle to my brush. That's then giving me what I like to call a toe, which is the highest point, and the heel, which is the lowest point. You wanna then load this brush up with, again, those two contrasting colors. You also need to have a floating medium for this. A floating medium basically enables you to distribute acrylic paint without it drying too quickly. Some people do just load the brushes up with loads of water. I'm not a big fan of that, guys, because if you put too much water into acrylic paint, it actually breaks down the, the pigments or the actual compound of the paint. So floating mediums are much more effective. If you haven't got a floating medium, then a good backup plan to that is if you've got a can of paint at home, any old wall paint, you'll notice if you've let it stand for a while, you get like a layer of oil on the top. If you scrape that oil off with a spoon, that is just as good in my opinion as an actual floating medium. And of course, it's a lot cheaper. Once you've got those techniques, guys, and once you've got the ingredients, it, this one really does require a little bit of practice, but it's really about then constructing the rows. Now, I don't necessarily like to call it the one stroke technique because I think actually you can build up a lot of different layers and different tones by working the brush time and time again. So as you can see in this video here, I'm actually working the brush quite heavily to really try and achieve those effects. And don't be afraid to go back over those lines. You know, if you wanna try and make it a one stroke technique, it will take an awful long time to master. Whereas I find actually, if you just really start playing with the technique, don't be afraid to make a mistake, but still have the confidence to work over those lines, you're gonna get a much more successful result at the beginning. And the third technique is probably the easiest where you're actually using a spoon like this. This is a particularly small spoon. I did upload a video recently where I've actually shown how to do this as a step-by-step -step guide. But the trick to making the spoon technique work, guys, with roses is that you have lots of paint. Ideally, you're gonna use an impasto gel. So impasto is where you have very thick paint and it simply just thickens the acrylic to make it more like an oil medium. If you haven't got any impasto gel, you can actually make your own just by using some basic ingredients at home. I'll leave a link just below where I've shown a video of how to make your own impasto gel. But once you've got those ingredients, guys, it really is just simply a case of using the actual shape of the spoon and then just making sure you build up those textured leaves. So if you wanna see that video, I'll leave a link just below on how to produce an effective rose. 
So there's your three techniques, all as effective in my opinion, but making rose paintings so much more easy than you actually think they are. I'd love to hear from you guys if you have tried one of these techniques already, so do leave a comment just below. And if you have enjoyed the video guys, then please do hit that like button just below as it really does like help our channel. And if you'd like to see some more weekly top tips just like this one, then do hit that notification bell because we do upload videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Alrighty guys, we'll see you next time. Happy painting.